What's going on everybody? So today we have a DD15 2009-2010 EPA 07, which is non-DEF, okay? So a problem I was having, customer was having, wasn't able to do a regen, and because of that, it went to zone five. So zone five means you're completely plugged up. We sent out the DOC to be cleaned. We sent out the DPF to be cleaned, even though the customer states DPF was cleaned already, but DOC was not cleaned. So we cleaned out the DOC, which was extremely filthy. I'm gonna just try to show you those numbers on the receipt. Um, another problem we were having is the throttle valve was all over the place, okay? So if you have that problem, real common issue is the Delta P sensor or the Venturi pipe is plugged. Now we removed that and everything was nice, and everything was clean, so I was a little shocked on that. Uh, let me show you the video of the throttle valve. Hopefully I have that, if not, I'll explain. Throttle valve essentially is just jumping all over the place. So because it's jumping all over the place, you're thinking, okay, hey, exhaust issue. And that's typically what it means. Either you're plugged, Venturi pipe, Delta P sensor, or in this case, I'm gonna show you what the problem was. So hopefully this will help you guys out if you ever come across it. Okay, check this out. Okay guys, so I quickly wanted to show exactly what I was talking about when it comes to cleaning out your DPF and your DOC. So we had the DOC cleaned out, as you can see here, DOC cleaning. Uh, there's no serial number actually on the DOC, but this is what was removed, 443 grams. Now normal is typically about 100, maybe 125 grams. So obviously that was extreme. DPF was clean, um, actually it wasn't bad at all. So that's a serial number that you definitely need to input into the MCM. And that's what was removed, 86 grams of soot. So that's how this particular place does it. I like using them because they're very thorough and they're very accurate with what they do. So they also flow test it, which is good. That kind of gets you a good idea of what the integrity is of the filter itself. Uh, and again, 86 grams on the DPF, which is great. And then when it comes to your DOC, 443 grams, which again, typically one, 125. So this is some heavy stuff right there. So. Uh, again, always good to have it double checked. I know sometimes some shops will say they clean it or some customers, so always be sure uh, you know what you're doing and you know who you're dealing with. But uh, again, just to show you the numbers. So, all right guys, so we are about 30 minutes into a regen, uh, almost done. I'm actually really happy with the way things are turning out. So again, a plug EGR cooler is something you need to look at. Now it's not something we typically consider because it's something we don't see. You can. Uh, Put a test one on there if that works for you if it doesn't work for you obviously you can go buy one or take it out and be sent uh sent to a shop to be tested so those are some options for you in this case i happen to have a test one we slapped it on there and again egr cooler is bad so let me show you the computer the laptop so you can see for yourself exactly what's going on and you can see what uh, what the numbers are so again we're about 30 minutes in maybe about another five to ten more minutes and we're actually done and this truck can actually get released and sent back to the customer and he's ready to go. He'll be happy. I'm happy, that's for Dan. Okay guys, if you can see there for yourselves, 100, uh, 1,722 seconds is where we're at with this particular truck. Um, temperatures, again, are really good. Throttle valve is solid, so we don't have the throttle valve jumping around like we did uh, in the video itself that I'm gonna show you again. When I'm done, I'm gonna put this video all together. Hopefully it'll come out good. Hopefully you like it. And uh, hopefully you're gonna smash that like button and subscribe or both, either way. So again, numbers look good. We're almost 1800 seconds into this. So this should actually be finishing up pretty soon. And then we're ready to go. So temperatures are good. Uh, once this thing cools off again, I'm gonna go over exactly what I did. So hopefully if you encounter this problem, you're able to figure it out and get yourself back on the road or get the customer back. Hey guys, can you hear that? There is a difference. Regen is done. Check engine light is gone. This is telling us that our filter is hot. We just completed the regen at about 1900 seconds. 
throttle valve is fully open, which is allowing the engine to cool off completely or come down to a normal temperature, I should say, not come cool off completely because that shit will take a while. Your filter is dropping down, thousand, blah, blah. Looks fantastic. I am extremely happy with the way this is turning out. Uh, we are back to zone zero. We were at five, now we're back to zero, which means we're clean and clear. Uh, here we have no more fault codes when it comes to our MCM. See that soot level very high, 3719 FMI zero, gone. So we still have a few other issues, but nothing related to regen, which makes me extremely happy. I'm gonna turn this part of the video off, but the engine, see, it's gonna go back to idle. I'm gonna let it go all back to idle. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we did, what we covered. And again, hopefully the whole point of this video is to show you guys, hey, think outside the box, look at what other options are out there, see what else is going on. Um, and this, this way you guys can keep your trucks running longer and stronger, okay? So temperature is gonna cool off. Uh, it's gonna take a while before this goes down. I'm not gonna mess with that too much. We are gonna put a brand new EGR cooler on. Right now I have a test one. As I mentioned, oil pressure is good. No more check engine light. Again, this will go away. I'm gonna let the truck run and just kind of cool off by itself. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna use the RPMs a little bit to help chill it out. It's not gonna hurt it any. So anyway, let's go take a look at what we found on the old EGR cooler and uh, we will go from there, guys. Let's go okay, take guys, a look. So here we go. This is the DD15 that we're shooting the video on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, normally the first thing I would check would be your Delta P sensor or your EGR Delta pressure sensor, your Venturi pipe, okay? Venturi pipe sometimes will get plugged inside because there's two ports in there, okay? Those two ports tend to get clogged depending on what's going on. That will cause the throttle valve, when it's closing, it, it can't quite figure it out, so it's gonna kinda do this thing and that's why you get that surging. find anything at first after trying multiple times to do a regen finally we took it apart again and then that's where we noticed inside everything was moist and wet I'm gonna post the pictures to go with it I don't have that much video on it but I do have some pictures okay we then followed the trail all the way down which points us to the EGR right. and this is the EGR cooler that we installed again this is a test EGR cooler this is one that I have um, for just that reason okay every now and then we have something extra which we can use other than that, you would have to buy. Okay, guys, so here you go. This is the original EGR cooler that came off the guy's truck. Uh, again, once we were able to do a regen, we were able to look inside and see that this was wet, number one. Number two, I don't know if the camera can show that or the light can show that. You can see all that buildup, all that carbon, okay? That goes all the way inside. Let me see if I can. There we go. So you see all that crap down there? That leads me to believe that the vents inside the actual EGR cooler are plugged completely. So that's the outlet side. This is the inlet side, okay? So looks pretty bad. And again, we were able to confirm that by using another EGR cooler. Now you don't have to go ahead and have a test one. Uh, it helps if you do, or if you have a sister truck or something like that, you can swap it and go from there. So that may help you out. So guys, again, I hope this uh, helps you guys out, shed some light on this particular situation. So we're able to get it done for the customer. He's gonna go ahead and go get another EGR cooler. I don't know exactly what he's gonna do as far as get a new one. Uh, he says he may have some kind of warranty. I don't know, that's beyond of a, you know, beyond what I'm doing. Uh, I recommend going new, but again, to each their own. So anyway, guys, if you liked the video, if this helps you guys out, as always, please smash, give it that uh, like, that thumbs up. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thanks.